evangelist Brooks. And then after this, we'll go into everything else. Amen. Amen.
like to thank praise God for his goodness and for his mercy um, to me. I'm giving honor to all the, the mothers. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for that. And the fathers. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Where would we not be if it had not been for Mary who brought up? Hallelujah, our Savior. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We thank the Lord for Mary. Thank the Lord for our salvation in Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. I'm here to uh, bring a welcome to you. Okay. <laughs> to bring a welcome here to you this afternoon. And we're so grateful that you're here. Could have been somewhere else. Right. Hallelujah. But the Lord laid it on your heart to be here. And we thank you. Praise God for each and every one of you being here this afternoon. Amen. Proper. Raymond E. Brooks Ministries has been going on for over 10 years. So give him a hand. I want you to do something for the Lord. Amen. He loves the Lord. He is my brother in law and he's a prophet. But I thank you, praise God, that the Lord laid it on his mind to do something for the Lord and to celebrate our women. How many are always, sometimes we need a little encouragement. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you Amen. Bringing this program here. Hallelujah. We pray that something will be said. Hallelujah. That something will be said to uplift, to encourage. Amen. So that you know that God loves you. Amen. Those in spite of God loves you. So you're welcome to sing, to shout, to praise God, and to give God the due glory. Amen. You're welcome. And the voice of King Lindemann, the prophet, that his mother taught him. Yes. What, what son, what my son, and what the son of my womb, and what the son of my vow. Give not that strong, give not thy strength unto woman. Another day ways to that which destroy kings. It is not for king Olivia, it is not for king to drink wine, another for let's stop right there. I went to that scripture because it's women's it's Mother's Day, and sometimes we feel like that we are mothers, single mother, and our children coming up without a father. And we feel like, well, they can't be good men, but we can teach our young men as a woman how to be a man. Yes. Glory to God, cause she, a virgin woman, she don't have a name, but it could be you, you, or you. Right. Amen. Right. God is a good God. Yes, he is. I know God is a good God. Yes, he is. I know
Amen. Picked on my sister-in-law. I know this is a, I, I'm going to say a rest day for her because it is a pre-mother's day. So I really shouldn't have called on her, but she has a willing heart. She has a willing spirit. And she doesn't mind singing for the Lord. Nobody should mind singing for the Lord because God brought us a mighty long way. He woke us up early this morning and started us on our way. The alarm clock didn't wake me up. What about you? Did it wake you up? Because it did wake me up this morning. Hallelujah. But it was nothing but the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. That woke me up. Hallelujah. I thank God for his goodness. I thank him for his mercy. And right now we're going to close this and we're getting ready to uh, separate ourselves. I need all the men to stand up and to go out the entrance door. Amen. And all the women, I need you to move up close a little bit. Come on, women. Amen. Good afternoon. Happy Mother's Day. Amen. Okay, we're going to eat some spiritual word here. First of all, we're going to call Minister Siobhan Travis. Give her a hearty amen. amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise Five minutes, not a problem. Well, <laughs> you may return to your scripture real quick to Psalms 27. The theme is God makes no mistakes on who he allowed to be mothers and fathers. Amen. And how many of you all have either had one parent or two parents? Amen. Everybody got a two-parent household or one-parent household? You have mom and dad. Okay, well, I grew up in my mom. I didn't have my dad. And this scripture I'm about to read to you helped me survive. It helped me survive. Psalms 27, verse 10 says, When my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord would take care of me. Then 11 says, Teach me your way, O Lord, and lead me in a smooth path because of my enemies. I kept that scripture in my heart. Because I went through a point in my life where my father didn't want anything to do with me. Mm -hmm. And he told me that. Mm -hmm. He told me he wanted to do it. And I told God I had so much hurt. And not just hurt, but how many of you know it, it will make you hate mm -hmm. and have anger? Okay, well, I told myself I, I hated him. And I had an anger bird, an angry bird with him. But I asked God, God took me to that scripture and said, when your mother and father forsake you, I'm going to take you with oh, okay. And when I was going through it, God had to be my father. Because I didn't know what it was like to have a father. Mm -hmm. And when you go through a point in your life of where you are missing something, yeah. God said he'll take you in. The thing is, he ain't just going to take you in, but he's going to teach you. And then the Bible also said, teach me your ways. You can't just ask God, can you do this, God, do this, do this, do this, God, but you're not willing to sacrifice anything in return. You can't ask God to move on your behalf and you ain't sacrificed and gave him nothing on your behalf. When was the last time you gave God something for something for God? I'll wait for it. When was the last time you asked God to bless you with a financial blessing, but when was the last time you was a blessing to somebody? When was the last time you gave your task? When was the last time you gave your offer? When was the last time you did something for something? You got to speak God back to God in order to make God move. So you can't say, okay, I need you to do this and I need you to do that. But when I was at a point in my life, I needed God to show me what it was like to be a father. And the thing is, he didn't just show me how to be a he didn't just show me about being a father. He did what the Bible says. He chastised those who he loved. And it didn't feel good sometimes when God had to tell me about myself. I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna point no finger at you. I just tell about myself. It didn't feel good when God told me, Siobhan, you was wrong for telling that lady off. It didn't feel good sometimes when I told God I was mad and I told him how I felt. But at the same token, you got to also be able to listen and take heed to what God has for you. In order to give something, you ought to get, you gotta give something away to God. You got to sacrifice. And it's not just a, 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 a seesaw relationship. It's a straightforward relationship. You're going either up or down. You're going a lateral or cross. But God will meet you right where you are if you welcome him. That's the problem with some of us today. We think we can do it on our own. I'm a strong, independent-minded.
a woman and I think I can do this and I think I can handle this. But what about if you have God? Because the Bible says if God is before you, he's more than the world what? Against you. He's more than all the issues that's fighting you right now. But you got to turn to God. And you got to not just turn to him, but you got to also trust him. You can't just ask him to do something. You can't ask him to come to your rescue if you don't trust him. Why be in a relationship with somebody you don't trust? All right. I'm waiting for it. We can't be in a relationship with no man if we don't trust him, right, ladies? We can't be in a relationship with nobody if we don't trust him. So well, you have to take that same relationship value and that same relationship principle with your father that you don't see but that you believe. I just need somebody to believe that he really exists. Every situation you've been in, he really brought you out of it. It wasn't you. It wasn't your job. It wasn't your 401k plan. It wasn't your Bentley. It was God that brought you out. And he taught you some things along the way. And the thing is, you can't just hold what he taught you. you got to give it back. Go back and get a young lady that you see wearing her dress way up here. Don't be talking about her. Put your mouth on her. But you pray for her. I can buy you a dress, baby. I can put a girl on you and help you with a slip. Keep your mouth off people because you don't know where they come from because it was you once upon a time. It was you once upon a time. It was you once upon a time. I got two more minutes and I'm about to go to my seat. And the thing about this thing is in this relationship, you don't just want God to teach you. You don't want him just to instruct you. You don't want him just to do this, this, but you also want him to forgive you. I'm going to hurt somebody feelings right now. You can't move on if you don't forgive. You can't get a breakthrough if you don't forgive. Stop holding something somebody did to you 20 years ago. Still holding on to it then they in the casket. And you're like, well, I guess I'll let it go. Can I tell you something? When they sleep at night, you still holding on to that. You tossing and turning and battling with your spirits. And you allowing the enemy to come in like a flood and seek you up as me and put foolishness on your mat because you have not forgiven. How can you love somebody? How can you love God who you don't see but don't love the neighbor that's sitting next to you? How can you say you love your auntie but you ain't forgave her because she hurt you? How can you not forgive? It's an exchange in a relationship. So when God put your mama in your life, yeah, your mama probably forsook you and did something else, but God prepared you because he knew that he had a purpose in your life. God knew that he had a purpose in my life when my father was going to hurt me, but I remember greater is he that sent me than he that sent the world. So no, I know my father hurt me, but guess what? I had to forgive him. And then the thing is, when you forgive somebody and got 15 seconds left, God will end up putting you in a situation where you got to face the problem. Can I tell you something, women of God? That's your other test to get to the next level that you want God to pull you out of. That's the next level with your blessing attached to it. But you got to forgive. And then you're going to be faced with the issue to see if you have overcome it. Have you overcome your instant? Have you overcome your problem? Have you overcome your situation or your father or your less problem that you went through? You got to forgive. You can't move forward. Let it go. Let it go.
will. God bless you. Okay, 
not the mist. I want to take talk about that. He realized he, he didn't have anybody to till the ground. Mm -hmm. Oh, bless your name, God. To be friend with the animals oh, and whatever. <laughs> and so there had been no rain up until the, uh, the, he decided to make the mist. Mm -hmm. And it went up. And that's when he got down and molded man out of the dust of the earth. And so it says, it said, the Lord caused a deep sleep to come upon Adam. And he slept. And the Lord took, what you said, that breath out of his side. And he said, then he put it back together. Because you can't live with an open womb. So God knew to seal it back up. Yeah. Put that flesh back together, make it as it was never anything missing. All right? And so, and from the rear, he took and made a woman. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jesus. All right. I'm glad you're a woman today. All yes, right. I am. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Me too. Mm -hmm. And when he made Eve, this is after the fall, falling out of the garden. Before. Yes, God. He made, took the rib, and he took and went away yeah. after putting the sleep, and he mm -hmm. made the woman. All right, and yeah. he brought her back to him. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, yes. When we need to be brought to mm -hmm. him. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now we run on the river. Come on, say it. Say it. Say it. Say it. Say it. Let the Lord say it. Bring us to him. To him. Yeah, right. Come on. Right okay. Yes, so I'm going to stop just, the, the word knew him. I'm going on down because I'm going to the 21st. Okay, that was 21st. The second one. And but he took the real and made a woman and brought her, him under him. And uh, it says he called her Eve because she was the first of the living things. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that's where it says, and thou shalt a man leave his father and mother, and shall cleave unto his wife, yeah. and they shall be as one, yeah. one flesh. United, connected. <clears throat> With everything that he knew that he needed male and female to reproduce yeah. his own. And I thank God for that. Yeah. I had only one son, he's gone. He have two grandsons and four great grandchildren. <laughs> but I thank God. Genesis 4 and 1, and Adam knew Eve, his wife, as she bare him came and said, I have got a man from the Lord. Her firstborn was a male child. The ex-wife connected. And she had a boy. Then turned around and said she bare another one named Abel. Yes. The ex-wife. Pumpers on the came together. All right now. Hallelujah. Bless your name, God. Amen. So we thanking God for fertility because I looked down in the story about Ham. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. About Samuel, that's Samuel's mother. Yeah. Okay, I looked at uh with somebody else I had it. Okay. Okay, I'm going to go into the definition. It says a father responsibility. And it says to provide. Yes. To this um, discipline in love. Give good examples of God and living. Of God. The great, and then I'm going to uh, do it around at seven. That was six, one in 1619, where the, the Ten Commandments and the statutes were given from God to, to Moses to take and give to the children of Israel. After they had come out of the garden, out of Egypt and everything, because I had a message, I am that I am. But I want to tell you that he taught them to honor thy father and mother as the Lord has commanded thee that the days may be prolonged, and he will, he and it will be well with thee. 
and, and, and in the land the Lord thy God shall give it thee. And, uh, Deuteronomy uh, uh, this, um, this 21st and 22nd verse. Then it talks about in Deuteronomy 6 and 4. Hear, O Israel, the Lord God, the one and who is our one God. And thou shalt love the Lord with thy the Lord with thy whole thy heart, whole heart, and with thy soul, and with all that thy mouth. Yes. Talking about teaching your sons, your daughters. Yes. How to love God. Yes. And as parents, we're supposed to do like him. Yes. How she grieved and wanted a child. Right. Yes. And I looked up the word about sore, and I looked up the word that was uh, talking about, um, it says, that she, uh, I think, felt intimidated because for now, whatever her name was, had all these children, and she wasn't conceiving it. All right? Mm -hmm. But it said her husband mm -hmm. gave her a worthy portion yes. because he loved her. Yes. I want to know why she wasn't eating. Mm -hmm. Why was she sour? Mm -hmm. Why was she bitter? Mm -hmm. And I looked up the word and said, it's a, a, port, a portion of a person of your manner, your, your being, that you become in contact. You come into a point of uh, you're feeling uh, somebody's against you. Mm -hmm. And so she felt threatened. Okay. Well, why you threatened? You got the man. <laughs> you got the man, what you threat for? Right. And he showed her love. He told her, Kevin, the Lord, I love you and give you a, a worthy portion. I don't understand. But her heart was, she wanted a male child. Yes. And when she conceived a male child, she took it back to Eli, mm. the priest. Mm. And she said, I'm gonna give you. She promised God a vow that if you give me a male child, mm -hmm. I'll give it back to oh, you. Yes. Yes. And I'll give it for the rest of his life. So when she conceived and after she had winged him from her breast, she took him to the priest, Eli, mm. and gave him over to the priest. Mm -hmm. And they say he became one of the Samuel, Samuel became one of the greatest yes. kings yes. Right. out of Israel. Yes. Okay? Talking about, it says that honoring and respecting and obedience, and for the parent, mother, or father, to lead this child and teach this child in life to be productive, not only spiritually, naturally, but in every phase of life. In other words, train them, discipline them, show them love, and so that we can lead them. And that's why it takes two in the household, although it may not be the one. I'm raised without a father, too. Oh, it's my cat. Oh, yeah. I'm on the halfway there. But I want to say this here. And wrap it up because it says, it says this is, there is a penalty when children do not obey their parents. Yes. There is a penalty. And we have to live with that. Sometimes our children go astray. And it grieves our hearts. And everything, but we have to get out and pray. And ask God to direct. And, every, and whatever the will of God is, let it be so. When I lost my son, they thought I was supposed to go crazy. I didn't go crazy. Come on. I took it in stride. I grieved at home. I didn't grieve, uh, you know, out public. But what I'm saying, when I lost the son and everything, it happened suddenly. It happened suddenly. I was at my job. And I got the call. And the first thing I asked, I said, so, well, is he up, sitting, is he laying down? And what's he doing? They said, we placed him in the paramedic that failed. Meet us at the Morris Hospital. And by the time I got there, he had already taken his last breath. But it, it wasn't that I didn't talk and teach to him. Because the scripture says, teaching the commandments, and when he rises up, 
when they're walking in the walkway, mm. passing away, when they're sitting down, when they're getting up and they're eating. Give them the word of God. Yes, yes. And I try to do that yes. to my best ability. Pray my strength on that. Have a church with her since I was 21 years old. So if anybody knows she ain't gonna do no five minutes. Okay? Everybody that know her knew she wasn't gonna do no five minutes. But we thank and praise God because she's a seasoned woman and she has been faithful. She has been faithful down through the years. As I came into church, I saw her stand strong. So she might have been up here a little long, but I know the sister ain't been swerving, okay? Right. So we thank and praise God for her. So uh, next we're going to call. I had it mind, but she made me fade, made me forget. Okay. Evangelist Peggy Robinson. Give her a hearty amen. We grew up together as young kids. Come on. and make us stronger. Uh, when Prophet Brooks called me, I said, Lord, give me something with uh, Proverbs 31. But give me a twist in that because I said, it's always just Proverbs 31. Okay. So he says that, uh, Proverbs 31, scripture tell us that she's a, a woman with no name. So All that could right. be any of us. And she's also splendid everything that she does. Mm -hmm. Cooks clean, mm -hmm. talks to people, she mm -hmm. uh, makes her own fabric, she buys her own land right. and yeah. garment for herself. Right. She's just a woman that does everything. Maya Angelou would call her phenomenal if she was a black woman. Matter of fact, she helped the poor. She constantly did uh, productive work. And even though she barely sleep, she uh, would still toil all through the night when her family was asleep, her husband, her children. Mm -hmm. She had words for everybody of wisdom and kindness. Mm -hmm. Whatever the situation was, she was the modern day Ann Landers. Mm -hmm. And we thank God that he put her in Proverbs 31. Wow. Because I said, Lord God, show me somebody else that's different. Somebody that's like us, somebody that's going through something, somebody that knows that it's not easy. Uh -huh. Even when you praise God. So I said, Lord, just put my mind on a book. And he said, try roof. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. The, the, the word says that Ruth was a, neither a wife or a mother. She had excellent status, though. She was taught by her mother-in-law. And some of us, we have mother-in-laws and we didn't even listen to them. But Ruth, she loved the son and she loved the mom. Yes. She had uh, no money. She had uh, to scrape to get leftovers because she was poor. Her husband died and she didn't have anything. Matter of fact, her mother-in-law didn't have anything either. All they had was each other and Jehovah God. All right. One spring night when she was working for Boaz, uh -huh. King, the king that was going to be her husband that she didn't know about. But she followed her mother-in-law's instruction and she was worthy of that king. Ruth said she didn't know where she was going to go, how this man was going to pair, but the mother-in-law gave her perfect instructions on how to get this man. Not only just that man, but how to be a godly woman following in the footsteps of her mother-in-law. Because her mother-in-law had it all at one time until she became a widow. Uh -huh. right. Well, anyway, Boaz, uh, Boaz had an a inclination to disrespect Ruth, and he had favor with her because she was already chosen by God. All right. You know, kings, I believe, were something like uh, priests. They had discernment. Uh -huh. So he knew there was something special about Ruth. So Ruth would work for him in the fields, uh -huh. and she would get the extra meal, extra grain, and bring it home and make barley soup for her mother-in-law, Naomi. Naomi gave her exact instructions on how to act while she's working, how to act when she's in this 
Boaz's presence mm -hmm. and what to expect mm -hmm. after she would be rewarded by him. Ruth was nothing like Proverbs 31 woman. Proverbs 31 did everything perfect. She had it all. She had everything. Even her kids praised her. Ruth didn't have any children. But she was going to get one after she was married to the king. Ruth had a field, but she worked in it. She was a hired hand. Proverbs, Proverbs woman extend her hand out to the poor, but Ruth patiently waited for Boaz to give her what she needed. Yes. And she found favor in that because she was so humble. How many of us could really be humble? Mm -hmm. You know, even when we don't have any money, we can look rich, can't we? Oh, yeah. 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 We, can, we, can, we can act like we got it all. Yeah. Yeah. But Ruth was not shamed before man or God. She just humbled herself. And God rewarded her, and so did her mother-in-law. Ruth to appear to have no marks of the virtuous woman. Yes, she still makes the grade, at least in the eyes of the Lord and of Boaz. It appears then that she has a hope for all of us, a mother, sister, daughter, wife. Yes. And even on Mother's Day when the sermons are being preached, sometimes we feel like we're not even uh, equipped enough to, 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 to compete with Proverbs 31. Yes. Because she's just an awesome woman. Yes. She's just a superwoman. Right. And you know, we struggle when we, when we, we argue with our children. But we always put it in the hands of the Lord because that's what makes us want to be so prayerful because we know God answers and he changes situations. And I really believe that Ruth had that spirit. You know, in Proverbs 31, I didn't read too much about prayer, but her behavior was that of excellency. So I know she honored God because she did so many things in private, even when her family slept. And they recognized what she did because they blessed her and honored her. I believe that Ruth and Proverbs 31 woman had a lot in common. Right. Even though they had different heirs, because Proverbs came after Ruth. Right. But Ruth had already laid down a foundation of what type of woman to be. But she's never mentioned on Mother's Day. It's always Proverbs 31, the woman with no name. So I said, I honor Ruth because she's a very good example. And I said, it don't matter how we cook, clean, work, God's going to love us no matter. We don't have to show ourselves excellent in nobody's eye but his. He approves us the work that we do for others and for him. And I'm going to this. Uh, give all you guys a happy Mother's Day. Amen. I pray that you have a second thought when you're coming to Mother's Day when Proverbs 31 show up mm -hmm. because that includes us too. Because right. we're super women in God's
God has. Come on, come on, come on. But see, I'm glad about it. Around on us, 
wonder what happened to Sue, the reason why she like that. Did I go somewhere wrong, God? No, you didn't go nowhere wrong. All right. You didn't go wrong at all. God had already known that this was going to happen to yes. Sue before your task. But he made you that mother to handle a suit. Because you're the only mother that's going to be able to handle a suit. So don't worry about it. You didn't do that to Sue. You didn't go wrong with Sue. No. But God also know that you was going to be that praying Mother. Yes. Right. All right. All right. So take it to Jesus. Yes. Take it to Jesus. Yes. Just like Willie. Willie understand. Mm. What he want to do, who he want to be. Mm. He want to be that girl. He want to be the. He don't know. All right. All right. But it's okay. Because God said, you know what? Mothers, we still must love people. Yeah. Right. God, yeah. God, yeah. God, yeah. God is because you know why? God gave him to you. Yes. You are responsible for him. So you can't be ashamed. That's right. Because he's your yes, child. Yeah. God gave Willie to you. Yes. And Willie can't decide what he wants to be. It's okay. Yes. Remember, you are not good yourself. Yes. So you just pray. Uh -huh. And believe me, Amen. trust in God. Yes. Yes. Trust it will give you. And I know half us mothers sit up at night and we cry. Mm -hmm. And we wonder, Lord, what's next? Mm -hmm. What we doing? How we gonna make it, God? How we gonna take care of my grandbabies? I know some of you are probably left with three or four grandbabies and the daughter mm -hmm. is still running around. Mm -hmm. Oh, she's still running around, but it's okay. Mm -hmm. You see, because you know why? God made you that mother mm. and that grandmother. Yeah, that's right. yeah. Yeah. So you can't be mad at that door because God made you who you are. Right. That mother right. and that grandmother. Yeah. And if you got a problem with that, mm. you better take it back. Yeah. 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 So you, you, you can't be mad, neither mm. could you be upset. Mm. No. Because God said, bring me all. <laughs> bring me all. Mm. Yes. Yeah. Your problems and your burdens. Yes. And leave them on me. Yes. 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 So we should be at peace. <laughs> Mothers, should we be at peace? Yes. Yes. Should we be at peace? Yes. Yes. Yes.
but the hand of the Lord was upon his head. Yes. And the hand of the Lord was still upon him. Yes. At this time, I present to you, you. Elder Alan K. Williams. Praise the Lord. Lord. Y'all gotta make me feel a little more welcome. All right. Oh no, they wonderful introduction. But it wasn't my business. It wasn't because I've been so wonderful. And certainly because as a wasn't because I'm so handsome. <laughs> but my wife thinks I am. <laughs> and, and, the, and the elder said that God put his hand on my head. He got to have some big hands to put on his big old head. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. And, and it wasn't quite fair to me today to go on after Sister Antoinette. That's the one, right? <laughs> I'm going to talk to the Apostle Brooks about that. She's an awesome motivational speaker. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. <laughs> Praise God for you. Thank you very much. You know, the men were downstairs too. We were having a good time too. We weren't as, we weren't as loud as y'all though. We were having a good time. Just for, just for, just for one moment, y'all pray with me. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we just thank you. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you, O oh God, that we learn once again and be reminded that you are God that don't make mistakes. And you have kept your word. Lord, somebody know you. Somebody in this room know you. Somebody wants to know you better. Do what you do best, God. Just show who you are. Magnify yourself in this place like never before. We thank you for all you've done in our lives, for all that you're going to do. We pray right now, God, for these families. We pray for our family. We pray for the families of our friends. We pray for the families in this community. And we thank you, O oh God, for the ones that you have spared. We thank you for those you have saved. Yes, thank you. And we thank you, oh God, for those that you wouldn't allow to suffer anymore. Mm -hmm. We know you know what you're doing. So we're just going to humble ourselves before you as you have required. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 All right, I, I'm, I'm, I got to uh, talk through a couple of these scriptures. But we were downstairs talking to the young man. I know him in Jim Jim. And he know me as Butch, so he knows me, all right? We go back a while. And he's seen some things uh, he probably shouldn't have seen in me. Amen? I'm just telling the truth. He's seen some things he shouldn't have seen in me. And, and he reminded me of one of them. But I ain't going to tell y'all what it is. It wasn't that bad. But he remembered it. He remembered it. I never should have let him see that. But I hope it helped him. I hope it helped him along the way. Uh, Just being who I am, right? But the Bible has, uh, God has promised us some things. I looked in, uh, as, I, as Jim Dean was talking, as, as, as Minister Dill uh, was talking earlier today, he said that, he mentioned families. We were talking about families downstairs, uh, uh, Pastor Crudup and uh, Pastor Benson. We, we were talking about families downstairs. But whenever you're talking about a father, you're talking about a family. Amen. When you're talking about a mother, you're talking about a family. Yes. Don't let nobody tell you what your family is supposed to look like. All right? Don't right? have some ugly folk in your family. But we got some, got some beautiful, beautiful spirits, though, too. Right? Don't let nobody tell you what your family is supposed to look like. Even God didn't even tell you what your family is supposed to look like. Psalm 68, verse number 5, it says, uh, Our God is a father to the fatherless and a judge of the widows. Yeah. Is God in his holy habitation. Yes. And it goes on to say in verse 6, he says, God set up the solitary in what? Families. Yes. He bring about those which are bound with chains, but the rebellious dwell in the dry land. Mm -hmm. Amen. So God has promised to place us in families. Yes. Amen. Amen. Some of us don't have mothers and fathers, or some of us have mothers and fathers that ain't been what we would call much of a mother or a father to us. Am I right about that? Yeah. But they 
see the mother and the father. And God has said to honor them. He didn't say they had to be good. Say that. He didn't say they had to be perfect. Say he didn't that. say that they had to be so wonderful. He said honor them. Uh -huh. And we will tell the truth, we didn't always do that. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right. Come on, Shanta, you know. We, on that we know that we did what we did on that space. That's right. Okay. Some of us are a little quiet. Me and Shante, we're a little more quiet on what we did. I'm going to tell the truth. Tell the truth. But it was the same thing. Right. So God has promised us. Yeah. Right, now I can't be long. I'm going to be obedient. Yeah. And then he talked to us in the book of Michael. Mm -hmm. okay. <clears throat> uh, chapter 6, verse number 8. He said, he has showed thee, O oh man, what is good. He's already shown. Yeah. What is good. And what does the Lord require of thee? Mm -hmm. Somebody know this scripture. Mm -hmm. But to do justly. Mm -hmm. It's justice, right? Mm -hmm. And to love mercy. Yes. And to walk humbly with that God. Yes. Oh, praise God. So I had to look up those words. I don't know what all that stuff means. So justice means to administer des a deserved punishment. Mm -hmm. We talked a little bit about this. Mm -hmm. The men did. I'm going to tell y'all help me now. Come on, come on. Help us, Lord. Amen. It says to do justice, treat fairly. That's justice. Then he mentioned a little bit about mercy. Did y'all hear it? He said to love mercy. Love. We know love's an action word. To love mercy. And then it goes on to say, and to walk humbly with thy God. So justice, mercy, and humble. Mercy is to be compassionate and kind and mm -hmm. for some of our elders, you know, said to pity. Yes. We don't know how to use that word no more. Mm -hmm. I pity somebody. Have pity on somebody. We don't use that word. But to have pity, that's a good thing. Mm. It says favor. Uh -oh. And then, then, then this one what struck me. Uh, Mr. Deal, this is the one that struck me. It says to have evidence yes. of a blessing. All right. I like that. Uh -huh. You know, if you read your Bible, the, the Bible say that that when you don't have a father, your absence of mercy. Mm -hmm. Come on, y'all. Somebody tell me. I'm not telling you the truth. Right. It said your absence of some mercy when you don't have a father. Amen. Amen. So your father, your father is the evidence of a blessing. Y'all, y'all, y'all. God is the evidence of a blessing. So, so no matter how you feel about it. Right? right? Because you here, because I can look at you, mm -hmm. I see the evidence of it. Yeah. 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 I'm going to go on. I'm going to go Then he mentioned to walk humbly before your God. Okay. So what does it mean to be humble? Uh, Pastor Samson, it means to be subservient. Right? Subservient. You know what I mean? You got to do some work too, but it means uh -huh. to, to lower who you are, right? Uh -huh. So it says to, uh, uh, to be uh, inferior. Consider yourself inferior. Yes. Okay. We don't like that. <laughs> but being uh, inferior to who? Mm -hmm. Humble to our God. That's what it says. Yeah. And then it says for us not to be prideful. Mm -hmm. Right? Not to be prideful. All right? All right. Now, now the, the, trust me. Uh, as as, as uh, Elder Crystal was talking I, I remind I reminded myself of that hard work that the Lord had me do to get this job that He gave me. He didn't just say we're just going up in there. He said you're gonna do some work. I take pride in my work, but uh, y'all knew my story. You know why I ain't so proud of who I am. It's a, it's a ugly story. It's a beautiful ending. So. To yes. justice, mercy, and humility. Right? And pity. Right. So we, we, we talked a little bit downstairs about what is family. We just touched on it a little bit. And I told you God would, 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 would place you in families, right? Yes. So, 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 so listen at this, right? No matter what that thing is or who it is, you lost your brother. Right. God has sent somebody to act like a brother. Yes. Right. You lost your sister. Right. He has sent somebody to act as a sister yes. to you. Yes. You don't know your father. Mm -hmm. He 
He has sent somebody to act as a father. Yes. Come on now. Yes, sir. Come on. I recall when I lost my brother. I was just a little boy. I lost my brother. Yeah, you know. And my, my older brother, you know what I'm talking about? I was my older brother. He was my hero. Yeah. He was that thing to me. And if you mess with him, <laughs> I put it like this. For my brother, I keep a bridge. I punt in a hundred yards. I love him like that. Mm. And uh, Elder Benson told us, about a father too. He said, the father is someone to be looked up to. Yeah. I just, I like that one. Because I want my boys to look up to me. Yeah. I want my daughters to look up to me. Yeah. The kindest words I ever heard a person say to me was, Daddy, I want to be jazzed. Oh, come on now. They were little then. Mm. <laughs> I was 10 foot tall and willing for <laughs> But then, after all that I went through, y'all, and all that we've been through, yeah. there's still hope for us, right? All right. My son told me, he said, he said, Dad, now he was grown then, he was in college. He said, Dad, you're the best dad on the planet. No, okay. I said, that boy lying. That's so sad, You're the best dad on the planet. Now, now, now so he gave me something to, to live up to. Right? right? He gave me something to live up to. That boy, he just like his daddy, he slick. Mm. <laughs> he had me, he had me, he had me. And not only does he have me, he has all my love, he has my affection. Yeah. Right? He has, he has my discipline. Yeah. You know? yeah. I'm still his daddy, he grown. He'll be 30 this year, I think. 30. Now that's 29 this year. And, 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 and I'm still his daddy. That's right. Talk, talk, look at me sideways if you want to. Right? And that's another story. I can't do nothing with that boy. I know I can. But I tell the girl, well, who are you talking to? I ain't told you to take that tone with me. Oh, I want your homies. See, we can't treat our boys and our girls like they are homies. I got some homies. I don't even like my homies. So we got to watch what we're doing with our children. Yeah. Give them something to look up to. Yeah. Inspire them. So they can in turn inspire you. Yeah. Now, now, now my, my, my boys ain't safe. I'm going to tell y'all, they ain't safe. I wish they would. But in a lot of ways, they like their dad. Okay, I had somebody ask me about my boys. I said, but they look like me. He said, well, what about your daughter? I said, well, they look like their mama. They pretty. <laughs> Come on. They, ought to, they ought to resemble you. All right. yeah. Give them something that they'll uh, be glad to resemble. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Then I'm going to just give you just a little bit more and then we'll get out of here. We got we to gotta keep loving. Yes. We got to keep loving. Yes. And Paul says, Paul says that love does not hate behavior self unseemly. Uh -huh. It doesn't seek her own. Uh -huh. right. It's not easily provoked yeah. and thinks no evil. Yeah. Love rejoices not in iniquity, uh -huh. but rejoices in the truth. Amen. Love bears all things, uh -huh. no, matter, no matter how hard it may be. Love bears it. Mama, you gotta bear it. Uh -huh. you gotta bear it. My mama used to look at me and say, well, Y'all don't understand. Uh -huh. And I don't understand. But there's a method to what he's doing. That's encouraging. Yeah. That's encouraging. You yeah. might be lost, but you somebody think you're not. No, right. yeah. Love bears all things, believes yeah. all things, yeah. hopes for all things, and endures all things. Mm -hmm. My Bible says love never fails. Mm. But there are some things that will fail. It says whether it be prophecy, they shall fail. Mm -hmm. Whether it be tongue. They shall cease. Yeah. Where there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. Uh -huh. For we know now in part, and we prophesy in part. Yes. But when that which is perfect is come, yes. 
I, you know, you know that which is mature, that which has grown, that mm -hmm. as we get to that message. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. But that when that which is perfect is done, then that which is in part shall be done away. Right. So when I know better, mm -hmm. I can do better. Mm -hmm. Come on now. Yeah. And then the Bible said this, and, and I'm sure we can all connect here. It says, when I was a child, mm -hmm. I spake as a child. Yes. Mm -hmm. I understood as a child. Yes. I thought as a child. Mm -hmm. But when I became a man, okay, now. I put away the child. Yes. Come on now. But now we see through a glass, dark. Yes. But then face to face. Yes. Now I know in part, but then yes. shall I know even as also yes. I am known. And now by faith, mm -hmm. hope, mm -hmm. and love, yes. these three. Mm -hmm. But the greatest of these right. is love. Okay. And, then, and then Paul follows that up. He says, follow after love. Yes. And we know our Bible, your Bible, my Bible, say God is love. Come on now. And the Bible says, and desire the spiritual gifts, but rather that you may prophesy. Yes. You may prophesy. And I'm going to tell you little bit about prophecy. That's speaking with God. Mm -hmm. huh? Prophesy. Right. God's mouth to your ear. Yeah. Right? And from your mouth to the people. Okay. The Bible says it's for us to be just, to be merciful, mm -hmm. to be humble, mm -hmm. to be hopeful, mm -hmm. to be faithful, mm -hmm. and to continue in love. God bless you. Amen. Amen. I lift my hands and told around the reason to you. You reign on the throne, for you are God and God alone, because of you are glad.
can't switch over to this. Come on, Sister Chantel. Hallelujah. She got married now, so I don't know what her name is now. <laughs> praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, we can do better than that. Let's give y'all some praise. Hallelujah, all the elders, ministers, pastors, mothers, evangelists, everyone that's in the world tonight. We give you honor, amen. And then to see you embark upon this Mother's Day tomorrow and Father's Day shortly thereafter. Amen. We want to give reverence to everyone who's in the room tonight. Amen. We just are grateful uh, to the pastor of this lovely edifice um, and to everyone that's here. We are grateful. Um, I, I, that's one of my favorite songs, so I'm still stuck a little bit there. Amen. Because the most important person is in the room tonight. Amen. And his name is Jesus. Hallelujah. I don't want to be nowhere where he's not. Hallelujah. And so, uh, you know, when you sing all around, they have you have to do these stage names. So Chantel Songbird is that stage name. But my name well, that yeah. I received on yesterday, well, yeah. my husband is over there on the drum. Amen. 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 We just got married yesterday, but we are made the obligation to be here. And so we would miss this for the world. Amen. Um, there's a song that the Lord put in my heart. And uh, we're going to start there. Amen. When peace like a river.
for having your way, God. I thank you, Lord, it's going to be all of you and none of me. I'm just an agent, hallelujah, that you're going to use for your word today. I bind every attack right now of the enemy. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I loose it back to the pit of hell. Lord, you said in your word you give your angels charge over us. So we ask that you charge the atmosphere with your warning angels, delivering angels, archangels, ministering angels, and have your way in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You can all have your seat. Praise God. Hallelujah. So we all know the title today of uh, our sermon, our, our, our theme. Amen. God makes no mistakes on who he allows to be mothers and fathers. First of all, I want to go to Ephesians 1.4. And I want to give you some foundation here. Because without the foundation, you won't know what to piggyback on. Amen? So you've got to know the word first. So first of all, the Lord said, bring me a remembrance of my word. He said, my word won't come back void, but it will perform what I sent it out to do. You've got to get bold about this thing yeah. in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. So Ephesians 1.4 says, according as he hath chosen yes. us in him before the foundations of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Yeah. Psalms 139, 15 to 16 says, You made all the delicate inner parts of my body and knit me together in my mother's womb. Now we're still talking about mothers and fathers. God makes no mistake. Amen. My next scripture is Matthew 10, 30. And even the very hairs of your head uh -huh. are all numbered by God. Yeah. Psalms 27 says, talking about father and mothers, forsake me. Lie will be there to be with you. Teach me your ways. You have to activate his word for him to respond. Amen? So as I just piggyback on some of the things that were said today. Um, the woman of God that came up first said that the Lord would teach you his ways. Uh -huh. Amen? First of all, God says that he will bless you. Yes. Number one. Amen? If you don't have a mother or a father, as we talked about today, the Lord will bless you with surrogates. Amen? Yes. Hallelujah. He will send you surrogate parents. Yes. Amen? Hallelujah. The woman of God, the one thing I love that she said was, not only will God teach you his way, but he said, activate his word for him to respond to you. Make your request be made known to God, who is the author and the finisher of your faith. Hallelujah. The Lord said that he'll never leave you, nor will he forsake you. Hallelujah. He said in his word that he knows you before you were even in your mother's womb. Yeah. So if God knew that you were going to be here before you were in your mother's womb, God knew everything. Yeah. Hallelujah. The Lord said, my ways are not your ways, and my thoughts are not your thoughts. Just as the heavens are higher than the earth, my ways are higher than yours. Amen. Yeah. So having said that, God already knows. Amen. He said, I know the beginning from the end. He said, I'm going to provide whatever it is you need. If you need encouragement, he's going to send encouragement. If you need love, because God is love. Amen. So God is going to send someone to love on you. I, I, I heard the woman of God talk about the chromosomes. And I said, okay, God, I hear what you're saying. I'm going to say what you told me to say. Amen. In today's world, there's lots of confusion about homosexuality. But I'm going to tell you boldly, in Jesus' name, the devil is a lie. Yes. If you read in the word of God, he speaks about how he took the rib out of Adam and made a woman. Amen? Because he knew that the woman needed, the man rather needed to help me. He first, if you see the scriptures, he knew that the man needed a little help. So he sent him little animals, okay? Okay, he sent him little animals, okay? But the animal wasn't good enough. He needs to send him a help me. Amen? And God wants us to know, don't be confused. Amen? Let's not twist the word. Let's not make it to be what we want it to be. The word is the word. Amen? God said don't take away and don't add to it. It's a simple equation. Amen? And then I heard the woman of God talk. 
talking about Genesis 2.19, talking about the beast and how Adam, as we said, he made the, the beast of the field and then he sent the woman, amen. And then I heard the woman talk about Proverbs 31 woman, amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How she was, she was just awesome in everything she did. And let me tell you something about the woman today, amen. See, God has given a woman many skills, amen. God has given us skills and strength to be able to hold our families down. Amen. When Before God sends you that husband, women, God is going to give you the strength. He's going to send people your way. Amen. To show you the ways of how to be a woman. How to be a lady. Amen. Not everything that's glitter is gold. Amen. We can learn something from the mothers today. How they carry themselves. It's not about how you carry just any old thing and what you want to do. God is, I'm going to tell you as God's given it to me. God's requiring holiness. Amen. God is requiring holiness for us as women because we are representatives. Amen. Now let me tell you one thing God told me. He said he wants us to keep it real. Amen. Let me tell you something. You know what? We all come short of the glory. Amen. See, the Bible said you're overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of your testimony. God doesn't want anybody in here to be ashamed of where they came from. Amen. Because let me tell you something about the world as God gives it to me. See, the world wants to see you keep it 100. You know what that means? Be real. If you was in the world doing what you did, keep it real. If you was a drunk, drug addict, alcoholic, slut, prostitute, I don't care what it was, keep it 100. Because I'm going to tell you something God gave me today about the world. See, the world respects when you keep it real with them. When you tell them the truth, where you used to be, like my son-in-law. See, that's what I love about him. He keeps it real. He's out there doing the business of God. Amen. He was out there. They knew him as Jim Beasy. Now they know him as a man of God. He loves the Lord. Amen. And see, he sold out for the Lord. Amen. And that's what God wants. Soldiers. He said, many are called, but few are chosen. See, I'm going to tell you something. God knows your heart. He sees every secret thing. I'm going to tell you as a prophetess of God, because I got to tell you the truth, because your blood ain't going to be on my shoulders. Let me tell you that right now. See, God don't care. Like I heard one of the women of God speak earlier, how good you look, how good you dress, how well you do this. Let me tell you something. I heard her say, what counts is when you go before God, before you get in, okay? Before you get in. He said, what have you done with my talents? What have you, oh, well, you know, I was scared and we got 50 excuses why we didn't do it. But God said, my grace is sufficient enough for you. Amen? He said, I've given you all that you need. First and foremost, I gave you the Holy Spirit. Amen? That's there to lead, teach, guide you into all truth. He said, your spirit will bear witness. Let me tell you what that means in everyday terms. Whatever's going on, God's going to bear witness in your spirit and let you know what you need to do. Amen? See, God just wants us to be simplistic. These days, God is raising up simplicity. Amen? He's raising up realness. Amen? And that's what it's all about today. We, as women of God, being real. Ministering. Not having our heads up so high. People remembering where you used to be. Come on now. It ain't about, first of all, let me tell you what God's given me. He said, you know what? Your sins are in the sea of forgetfulness. He don't remember them anymore. Amen. So who is anyone to judge? He said, judge not, lest she be judged. What you measure out is going to hit you right back. Amen. Come on now. You ever heard that saying? Back at you. Amen. God said back at you. Stop playing with God. Okay. God's no play toy. He holds your breath in his nostril. Okay. You think you're hiding from God and God don't see you because you want to clothe yourself in religion? Oh no. Not I said the wolf. God ain't playing. Okay. The Lord said you should know the truth and the truth will make you free. Either you want to be free or you don't want to be free. Amen. And I know God's redirecting a message, but that's nothing new because that's God. God is God. It ain't about our programs and 
and agendas. It's about what God wants to do. Somebody needs to be set free today. Okay? Amen. Come on now. So I give God the praise of so many things. Amen. That went forth today. As I said, we talked about the Proverbs of women. We talked about the surrogate parent. That God is going to, you know, let me tell you something. I don't want anyone to be ashamed about what is going on in your life. Amen. See, the great thing is God knows the beginning from the end. Yeah. He knows the beginning from the end. And we have to embrace what God is doing yeah. in our life. We've got to get out of ourselves. We've got to put the mind of Christ on. Let me tell you, women of God, there are women out there that are looking at us. They're looking at what we used to be, and they're looking at what we are today. Amen? And you know what? Let me tell you, we're going to draw the young women. We can't make excuses. we got to be able to tell people the truth in love. Let me tell you something. If it's God, let me tell you, they're going to feel the anointing. Because the anointing destroys every yoke of bondage today. So being a surrogate parent means many different things. You got to not just talk the talk, but you got to walk the walk. And God said it's not just about helping your inner circle, your own blood. Okay? We as believers are from the same bloodline. Amen. So we got to be ready and able to be able to touch somebody's life. You may be going somewhere for one thing, but God will shift you to minister to somebody else. Amen. The Bible said you better be ready in season and out of season. We don't get no breaks. You don't know what's going to happen. You could be going somewhere, ready to have a nice time, relaxing. Next you know, shift, shift. God says, get ready for the shift in your life. Amen. 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 God said, get ready for the shift. It's time out for pew warmers. Come on now. The little cake and bake sales and the chicken sales. And all, that's all good. That's fine. But God said, I'm getting you out of your comfort zone, ladies. I'm getting you out of your comfort zone. See, because you want to stay in that little corner where it's safe. But God says, I want to take you out of yourself. I want to take you out of yourself so you can deposit, amen, in other people. Hallelujah. And then I heard so many things that I'm just going to just ask the Lord to help me because there's so much. As I said, the Lord knows the beginning from the beginning from the end. And the Lord says to us that we have to be humble. I heard the man of God speak on humility. Praise God. I heard him speak on, you know, how he used to be. But praise God that he raised up to be the man of God he is today in the community. Amen. Where he can show our brothers, hallelujah, as a young man of God. Amen. Amen. How, well, I used to be here, but look at where I'm at today. Amen. What does the word say? You overcome. You overcome. You've got to tell your testimony. Don't be ashamed of your testimony and where you came from. Keep it real because God wants us to be a pillar. The Bible said we're living epistles, ready and known above all men. Let me tell you what that means. People are seeing our lives now. Amen. People are seeing our lives now. And you know, if you make a mistake, guess what? Brush the dust off your feet and keep it moving. Amen. Don't, the Bible says, for there is no condemnation in Christ Jesus. See, the enemy will play mind games. I know we shift in here. Amen. But I got to do what God tells me to do. Praise God. The Lord said, you know what? The enemy will try to play with your mind and get you way out in never, never land. And make you think that what you're doing is okay. But it's not. And we as believers that are, you know, overcomers, we can't entertain that kind of stuff. You can't be kicking it with folks and trying to pacify and struggle, okay, because their blood is going to be on your shoulders. That's all part of being a mother. We have to be mothers to the young, mothers to the old, representatives to our children, amen, like the, the young lady talked about. You know what? We have to give our children to God. Yeah. Amen. The Bible said, and the Lord gave me the scripture, train up a child in the way they should go. And when they get old, it will never depart from them. What does that mean? Okay, we're going to have perfect little kids coming. No, the devil's a lie. Whatever God got to do to get them kids in order, let them do it. Amen. You got to release them and let them go. And you know, the Bible said, having done all to stand, stand, there with and see what? The self. 
salvation of God. Amen. So you're going to see God's hand on those children, mothers and fathers. But we've got to step out and we've got to do what God has called us to do and boldness. Amen. We've got to take the authority. Amen. That God has given us. We got to take the nuggets, mothers and fathers. We got to continue to be that representative of God. Amen. We got to represent the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. He's the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. We got to know the God that we serve. We got to worship him and praise him. As a woman of God back here said, we got to worship him. We got to praise him even when it's the worst of the world. The wailing mothers, the wailing mothers, the wailing mothers on our face before God pray for who knows who. But we got to get on our face, lay prostrate before God and pray. Pray for our nation. I'm tell y all, I thank God. My best friend flew home from Atlanta. I had asked him to come and he told me he wasn't coming. I told my sister, I said, if I had $500, I'd send for him. But don't you know only that he flew to Jolie. <laughs> He flew to Joliet and he came here and, and, and normally my family helps me. When they feel that I'm falling apart, they'll step in. But he flew in and he's in the kitchen with my niece and he told me to get out the kitchen. Normally my sisters and my sister-in-law, Evangelist Brooks, Mother Barbara Beatty, and sometimes if Janice here and normally my family helped me, but they told me to get out the kitchen and we'll take care of everything. And I really, I thank God for the songbird, uh, Chantel, all the way from Chicago. I really appreciate you. I, I really, I, you know what? What I really enjoyed was I know the wind was, the women was cutting upstairs, but the gathering of the men, you know, yeah, it wasn't 50 and 60 men down there, but it was what God wanted to be there. And I thank God for that. I thank God for the apostle. I thank God for your preacher, minister, elder. I thank God for um, uh, Lady Stephan, Prophetess Stephan, Stephanin. I can't say their last name, Corrupt, Kokoko, or something. I don't know. I don't know what it is. I thank God for this young lady here. She's getting ready to. I knew she was pregnant. I did. I, I knew she was pregnant. You know, I kept calling her her husband, her son. And, and I kept saying, it, and she's like, that's my husband. I said, I know, but I said, if I didn't have any sense, I would think he was pregnant. And her and her mother-in-law looked at each other, and she said, I am pregnant. I said, that's why I was calling your husband your son. Because there was a baby being birthed. Everybody's saying, I, I thank God for Elder, Pastor, Samson, I, I thank God for everybody. This, this is not the last. This is not that. I'm asking God to bless me in an area. You hit everything on the on the nail. You really did. I told my. They told me to put the tickets up to twenty dollars. I said I wasn't going to do it. I said it wasn't about no money. I wanted the women. I don't never see people do anything for women in Joliet. Maybe they do. I said I don't see it. You know, and especially they ain't got to be bothered with their children. You know what I'm saying? But I thank each and every one of you for coming out, and this is not the last conference. I told God I wasn't doing no more conferences. I told God I wasn't doing this no more because you do need a team. Really, you do. I mean, my sister, we get into it all the time. She tell me you need, and I tell her, I don't want no team because when you, when I do it, I do it perfect. But when I got somebody else doing it, they do what they want to do. They don't want to hear me out. I'm like, I don't want to be bothered with you. But I thank God for my help. I thank God for Cedric Elder, Cedric McNeil in the kitchen. And everybody, thank you. I like your spirit. Can you dismiss us, sir? Let's all hold hands. Good family. Go on, Jack. Amen.